Hey guys, today we're going to be checking out how to use vanilla extract with React, which is basically the CSS preprocessor that Shopify is now using after switching away from SAS. So, if they're switching away from SAS, let's take a look at what they're going to. So, to get started, we're first of all going to need to npm install two packages. First of all, vanilla extract CSS. And after that, we're going to need to install the plugin for your specific bundler. So if you're using Webpack, then this would be the Webpack plugin. I'm using Vite, so we're going to go with the Vite plugin. And after that is installed, we can actually head to our Vite config, like I've done here. And here, we can just go ahead and import Vanilla Extract plugin from Vanilla Extract Vite plugin. And then we're just going to use it in our plugins array right here, like that. And now we can already start using vanilla extract if we want to. So as you can see, I've prepared a little empty app right here with basically no styling whatsoever. It just says ABC right here. And we're going to style it using vanilla extract. So to do that, we're going to need to start with a file. In this case, I'm going to call it app.css.ts. So basically what vanilla extract is doing is it's using TypeScript files and then compiling them down to CSS so that the user doesn't need to use TypeScript in some strange way to create their styles. So this cs.ts file will actually be converted to normal CSS in the end. So now in here, we're going to need to import style from vanilla extract CSS. And this is basically going to be the thing that gives us the option to create classes. And the way that that's going to work is we're going to say export const flex center in this case and that is going to be a style so our goal is to create a style that we can reuse to create a component that just is a flex box that centers stuff and the way that going to that is going to work is we're going to say display is going to equal flex as you can see autocomplete is working just fine so that makes things a lot easier already and the next thing is of course align items center and justify content center and because uh, the div is not going to be big enough to actually see the align items part we're also going to give it a height of 100 viewport height and now to import it is actually quite easy we're just going to say okay import flex what did i call it flex center from dot slash app dot css that's actually kind of a cool bit right here because the file is called app.css.ts and you actually don't need to add the .ts extension. It's just going to look like you import a normal CSS file, which in my opinion is kind of cool. So now we can actually start using this flex center thing right here. And as I mentioned, we're just creating a class name right here. So you can import the CSS you're creating as basically a string that you can use as the class name. And now if we just head back to Chrome, you can see our text is now centered and our styling was applied, which is kind of neat. So now comes the really cool part because the big benefit of, the, as you can see, is for once auto completion, but CSS offers this as well, but also auto completion with types. Because remember, this is TypeScript. So the way that is going to work is we're going to create a new file called vars.css.ts, and this is basically going to contain a global theme for us. And this global theme is going to work quite simply, actually. So we're first of all going to need to import, create, global theme from vanilla extract. And then we can just export bars for now, which is going to be a constant. And that vars constant is going to be create a global theme, actually root. And here we're going to define our theme. So first of all, this hashtag root bit is basically the root element of your app. So if you head into your index.html, you're going to see this root element. This basically means all our CSS variables that we're creating in this virus file will be attached to the root element so that every bit of React can use them. And now we're going to start off by creating something called colors. And here we're going to define our custom colors. So not something like blue, but for example, you could define primary right here. And because it's easier, we're just going to say, okay, primary screen. And then we're going to say, okay, secondary is blue, for example. And yeah, that's basically how you would create a global theme 
with variables. But yeah, CSS would allow that just as easily. So what's the benefit now? Well, the benefit comes when we import the bars inside of our other CS, uh, CSS.ts file. So import bars from dot slash vars dot css and now if we for example wanted to say okay the background has a color right here then we could now just say vars dot colors dot primary and if we now check this out it's all green and as you saw i didn't type this all autocomplete so vars dot colors and now i can just select what i want if i want secondary then that works as well and that's already a big benefit because you always have access to all your CSS variables, which can make typing a lot easier. Another cool thing you can do is not just use global themes, but actually use a light and a dark theme, for example. So to do that, we are just gonna remove everything from the global theme here. This could still contain stuff like um, text size and whatever, but we are just gonna leave it empty because we now want to create the colors based on a theme. And that theme is going to be defined in a theme contract. And our contract is going to be called colors. So you could imagine this contract like an interface in Java. So it's basically something you can create a theme out of. So create a theme contract. That contract is basically now going to be our example of how we want to build our theme. And it's just gonna have secondary. It's just gonna have two keys, so primary and secondary, just like before. But now we want to control these based on the decided theme. So export const light. This is gonna be our light theme. That equals create theme. That theme is gonna base, be based on our colors contract. And it's gonna overwrite these values with following. Primary is gonna be yellow and secondary 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 gonna be orange as you can see all our errors are gone now and then we can also define a dark theme that's just gonna be i don't know brown and green those colors aren't gonna look nice that's for sure but this is just as an example and now to actually come back to the point where we can export our virus right here, we can just go ahead and say export const virus. So we are going to need to rename this bit up to something like root. And that is going to equal dot 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 root. So if you still had anything in root, then these things would still work. And Colors. So basically the quote unquote interface we defined up here. Because as soon as we override this, everything will still work. But we need to export the interface to be able to have the auto completion in our other CSS.ts files. And now if we were to go back here and say, okay, background is primary, then it wouldn't work right now because we didn't actually set the theme. So for now, I'm just gonna wrap another div around our div. And that div is gonna get another class name. And that class name is now gonna be light. Oh, sorry. Import light from dot slash bars.css. And now we can just set the light class name right here. And if we now head back, you can see it was applied. And if we just wanted to go with the dark mode, instead of the light mode, we can replace it right here. And that works as well. So you could imagine that you were controlling this using um, TypeScript and just saying, okay, this would be a rule and it would say, okay, in the true case, you could say, okay, it's light. And in the false phase, false case, it would be dark. Just like that. And yeah, as you can see, that works just fine. Alt and it's stuck. So this is already a much nicer way to do theming than yeah, just some hacky workaround just using only TypeScript or even worse, only JavaScript. But I think we can go a bit further still. 
So let's check out what we can also do in our app CSS.ts. All right, so another thing we can do is actually create variables. So these are still like CSS variables, but they are locally scoped. And the way that that is going to work is we're going to export another style. It's just going to be called local var style. And here we actually have this var bit. And that var bit allows us to basically do the same as we did here in our vars.css.ts. But by just defining, okay, I want this test var that I found on top to be green. And then if I want to use it, I can just say, okay, background is test var. So if we want to try this, I'm just going to black here because we already used green at some point. And now we can just go back to our app, import this local var style and just replace this flex centers thing with local var style. In our head here, you can see we got a black box because the other siding was removed, so it's not as big anymore. And we set the background color to black. This would of course also still work with vars.colors.whatever just to test it out. Works. Text is also still there, so everything is working as intended. So yeah, if you wanted to use variables, then that would work just as fine. Just make sure that if you want to use this variable in another style, um, this bit here is locally scoped. So if you wanted to use this in a part of your application that is further above than the local var style, then the variable might not be defined. Or even worse, if the var style is conditionally rendered and you use it somewhere else, then it might not work as intended as well. Another cool thing though is you could also use this logic right here to override um, your global theming if you wanted to. Not that I'd recommend that, but sometimes it might be helpful. I don't know. Now let's come to another cool bit, which is variants. Because as I mentioned, this has a lot of TypeScript integration. And let's say you wanted to create a component that renders something using props, and that prop would be what style you want. So to do that, you'd use style variants. And the way that style variants work, I'm gonna indent that a bit so that it's clearer, is you first of all give an information about what variants you want to use. In this case, this would be vars.colors. So basically, what options do you want to give your component about what props it can use? And then you basically give an arrow function that defines um, what would be returned by uh, giving it a key. Basically, this color is going to be the name of your color variable, and this color is just going to be the style. So basically, color primary, for example, could be imported here. You're going to see how it works as soon as we're going to use it. And to do that, we're just going to add a little extra function here called styled component. And that styled component is going to get props. And here we're just going to say, okay, return a diff it has style as a text. Because we're using TypeScript, we're of course going to define an interface for style component, which is going to be called style component props. And now we can actually start using this color variant. So first of all, we of course need to import it. And then we can just say, okay, the props of this thing can be color. And that will be a key of, type of, this color variant. So this looks a bit weird. But it basically just says, okay, from vars.colors, give me all the options you have. So basically, we can now just go ahead and say, okay, our class name is this color variant and props.color. So props.color is just going to be one of these, so either primary or secondary, like this. And we're going to choose it from color variant. So basically, this contains class names for all colors in virus.colors. And now if we want to use it, we get a really nice autocompletion. So color equals primary or secondary. So you basically already have an enum that was created automatically to define what color you want your thing to be. So now if we just close the style component and head to Chrome, you can see the color in here is now green. And if we wanted to change this in any other way, like let's say we don't want to change the color, but the background color works. Background, background, background. And we could do that as well. 
And as you saw here in the background, it works just as fine. I do think you could actually do something like that as well, if you wanted to, if that is easier to understand for you. But yeah, that's basically how it works. You pass in a color into this function and it's going to be, uh, be turned into background and the color. And yeah, that's also a really nice way to give your components some props about their styling if you wanted to do that because yeah, having this kind of enum basically is always really nice to have. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to show you, which is the Sprinkles API. So we're going to install it using import, uh, npm install vanilla extract sprinkles. And that is basically a module that is built up from vanilla extract to give you more features like conditional styling. And I think that's really cool. So we're just going to find some colors here because that makes it easier than using the global vars with the theming and all that stuff because that could get in the way if you messed up your um, class names for the themes. So this is a lot easier. And now what you could actually do is say, okay, we define a property and that property comes from vanilla extract sprinkles and it basically gives you the option of rendering for example the color conditionally so you can imagine this like media queries as you can see here is a media query and using this bit here you can basically say okay if you're on mobile your text is going to have a different color than if you're on desktop this, of course, would make much more sense um, with something other than text, like, for example, width or padding or margin or whatever. But we're going to use color because, yeah, that's easy to see, basically. And now, if we wanted to use this, we can actually just say, okay, export const sprinkles. So basically, the sprinkles module gives you the option to create sprinkles. And these sprinkles are basically options to either in real time or pre-compiled use this mobile desktop thingy right here which you're going to see in action shortly now we can basically just create this sprinkle thing right here and use it in another style so export const we're just going to call this test or let's call it condition condition style and that condition style is going to be based on the sprinkles object we created above and it's just going to say, okay, the color we want is going to be based on whether we use mobile. See, we got this nice auto completion again. Or we use desktop, in which case we want to go with gray 900. And this way, you can basically define your styles based on media queries without needing to always create every style 100 times and space them out because the media queries take so much time in your CSS or take so much space in your CSS. Now, if you just want to use this, we can say, okay, here, condition style, and add another diff right here. Class name is going to be our condition style. As you can see, right now it's light. And if you just put this desktop mode i don't think i have enough space to put it in another mode unfortunately okay so um i messed some stuff up as you can see um i'm zoomed in a lot so the whole thing is only 200 pixels wide so if we just change to 200 here you can see it becomes black and if we make it smaller then um yeah the color changes so as you can see this is a nice way to create media queries i was just uh, <laughs> a bit off because i forgot that i was that zoomed in because yeah if I have these dev tools open, then the whole page is only 205 pixels big. So a media query of 900 will of course not work. But anyway, this is a really nice way to do conditional rendering. This would actually be pre-compiled to CSS. If you wanted to do something in real time, you could actually do that as well using the Sprinkles API inside of your component. But yeah, that would be too far into it. I at least think that this especially is really cool. And all that auto-completion stuff you can do like... Um, so I'm, I showed here with key of type of color variant, even though it looks a bit weird, is quite handy. And I understand why someone would want to use vanilla extract. I can definitely recommend it and might use it at some point as well. But for most projects, I will probably stick to SAS because, yeah, sometimes you just don't need all of this fancy enum autocompletion stuff anyway. But yeah, let me know what you think about it. I personally think it's quite cool and yeah.
Hope you have a good day.